In this tutorial, I will show you how to join and separate objects in Blender. And I'll show you how this can affect the object's materials, the object's origins, and also the modifiers on the objects. Now, real quick before we start, tutorials like these are made possible thanks to my Gumroad customers and my Patreon supporters and my members on the YouTube memberships. So if you'd like to help support me and this channel, I will have links in the description to where you can support the channel. And on my Gumroad store and Patreon page, you can get access to 3D models and assets. You can also get access to artwork project files and procedural materials and all of the tutorial files. And if you join the YouTube memberships, then you'll be helping to support the channel each month and you'll get some cool perks here on YouTube. And if you find these videos helpful and you'd like to send me a little tip, you can also use the super thanks feature here on YouTube. All right, so when you're joining objects together, you can join two objects together or you can join multiple objects. So what you're going to do is select the first object and then hold down the shift key and select the other object. Or you can select multiple objects if you have more than two. Then to join the objects together, the shortcut key is control J and that is going to join the objects together. So if I just select this object, I can press G to grab and I can move it around and you can see that this object is all one. Now something that you might have noticed is that the object's origin point is in the center of this cube. And if I press R to rotate, you can see where it is rotating. So the objects on default rotate from their origin if the transform pivot point is set to the median point. It's going to rotate from the object's origin. Now why the object's origin is in the center of this cube is because these two cubes were joined into this cube. And that is because I selected this object last. So I'm just going to press Control Z to undo that. So now this object and this object and this object are all separate objects. So what I'm going to do is hold down the shift key and select all of these objects. Now you can see that these objects have an origin orange outline, whereas this object has a yellow outline. And why this has a yellow outline is because it's the last object that selected, so it is the active object. So I can now press Control J, and these other two cubes are going to be joined together into this cube. Now right up here in the outliner, I have hidden all the other objects and I've renamed these cubes. So we have cube one and cube two and cube three. So let's say that I want the other objects to be joined into cube two. So I'm gonna select the first one here, hold down the shift key, select this one. And then lastly, shift and select this object. So because this object was the last one that selected, it has a yellow outline and it is the active object. So I can now press Control J, and you can see that now it's all one object, but the object still has the name of cube two. So when you're joining objects together, all of the objects are gonna be joined into the one which was selected last. And if you do join these together, but you want the origin point to be in the center of the entire object, then with the object selected, you can click on object, and you can click on set origin, and you can set the origin to the geometry. So now you can see that there's that little yellow dot right there, and so the object's origin is in the center of all the geometry. So now that this is all one object, I can press tab to go into edit mode and you can see they are all one object. Now these meshes are separated so they're not actually connected, but this is all one object. Now when you are in edit mode of an object, if you want to select all the mesh which is linked together like this cube here, you can hover your mouse over the cube and then you can press the L key and that is going to select all of the linked geometry. So these are all joined together, they are touching each other and these vertices are connected into edges and faces. And so when I press the L key with my mouse hovered over this, it's going to select all the linked vertices. Now as I just explained, the other objects are going to be joined into the last object that was selected. And so this can affect the object's modifiers. For instance, I have this monkey head right here, and if I go to the modifier properties, this object doesn't have any modifiers. If I select this green cube, this green cube has a subdivision surface modifier, and so it is rounding out those edges. So if I first select the monkey head, hold down the shift key, and select the green cube last, I can now press Control J to join them together, and because the green cube was the last one that was selected, the monkey head was joined into the cube. So you can see in the outliner, this is now renamed to cube. It's not called Suzanne. It's not the monkey head. If I press control Z to undo this, you can see this object is Suzanne. It's the Suzanne monkey head, the mask got a blender. But if I select this object and then shift select this last and press control J, the monkey head is now joined into the green cube. And because the monkey head is joined into the green cube, it now has the subdivision surface modifier 
square on it. If I press Control Z to undo this, I could do it the opposite way. So I could first select the cube, hold down the Shift key, and then select the monkey head last. And again, the monkey head was the last one that selected, so it is the active object, and it has a yellow outline, whereas this object or all the other objects have an orange outline. So I can now press Control J, and you can see the object is still renamed to Suzanne in the outliner. And you can also see that the cube has lost its subdivision surface modifier, and that's because the cube was joined into this object. So if for some reason I did want this object to have the subdivision surface, but I wanted the monkey head to not have the subsurf, then it wouldn't be a good idea to join them together because they're going to share the same modifiers. But let's say I want to join these two objects together, so the green cube and the blue cube. The two cubes have the same modifier, they have a subdivision surface with two levels. So if I select the green cube and then hold down the shift key and select the blue cube, I can press Control J to join them together, and you can see nothing changed, the geometry looks the same, and that's because they have the same modifiers. Now you may be wondering how materials are affected. If I go over here to the material properties, this cube has a green material and this cube has a blue material. So if I select the blue cube and then hold down the shift key and select the green cube, I can press Control J and that's going to join them together. And you can see Blender has automatically added both of these materials into the object's material slot and it's assigned the correct faces to those materials. So most of the time Blender will just do it automatically and the materials won't be a problem. However, if you have a material which is using textures and the textures are using UV maps, then sometimes the UV maps can get messed up when you join the objects together. And they will get messed up if the object's UV maps have separate names. And I actually have a specific tutorial on that, so if you'd like to watch that tutorial, I'll have a link in the description and a card right up there on the screen. And of course, if you join multiple objects together, it'll do the same thing. So I can select this monkey head right here, hold down the shift key, select this orange cylinder, and then shift select these cubes, and I can press Control J, and they're all going to be joined together. Of course, these objects are now given the subdivision surface modifier, but you can see it's added all the materials into this object. Now these cubes here don't have any materials. You can see we don't have any materials in the material slots. So if I select the cubes here and then hold down the shift key and select these objects last, I can now press Control J and that's going to join them together. And you can see these cubes now have the green material. And that's because the green material was on the very top of the material slots. If I press Control Z to undo this, I can click on the orange material and I can click on the arrow here to bring it up and then I can select this object and shift select the other objects and I can press Control J and you can see now they have been given the orange material. So if an object doesn't have a material it's just going to be given the material of the other object. Now if you have two cubes that don't have any materials and you join them together, I can select them and press Control J because they both didn't have any materials, it's not going to give them any materials. So I'm now going to show you how to separate objects. So to separate objects, you first need to go into edit mode. So just press the tab key to go into edit mode of the object. So when you're separating objects, you have a few different options. To separate the objects, you're going to press the P button, and that's going to bring up the separate options. So when you're separating objects, you have three different options. So the first one is selection, and that's going to separate whatever you have selected into its own object. So let's say that I want this monkey head right here to be its own object, so I'm going to press the L key to select the linked vertices, and also L and L to select the monkey's eyes. And then let's say that I just want the top of this cube to be its own object. So I could click right here to go to the face select and then hold down the shift key and just select this face. So then press P to bring up the separate options and I can choose selection. So now I can press the tab key to go back to object mode and I can select this object, press G to grab, move it over, and then we have this object here. So you can see that whatever was selected is now going to be its own object. So I can press the tab key to go back into edit mode, and the second option is by material. So you don't actually have to select the objects, but you can if you want to, but I don't need to have these selected, so I can press P, and then I can click by material. And so what it's going to do is it's going to separate all the different geometry by the materials. So I can press tab to go back to object mode, select this object, and I can press G to grab. You can see that is separate, and also this one here, that's separate because it has the green, but then these objects here were all sharing the orange material, so they're still their own object. 
part. And then the third option is buy loose parts. So again, press the tab key to make sure you're in edit mode and you don't need to select the objects. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. You can press the P button and then you can click on buy loose parts. And when I do that, it's gonna separate each separate mesh into its own object. So for instance, all of this geometry here, it was connected to make the cylinder. And so it's its own object. And then also this is now its own object. And also this cube here and this cube here is its own object. So that is it. That is how you join and separate objects in Blender. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support this channel, I will have links in the description to where you can support the channel. But I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.